What is going on everyone? Welcome to the video. So we're going to start out with the workout today uh, rather than throw it at the end. Uh, so this is a upper hypertrophy workout and I just want to say right off the bat, you're going to be seeing a lot of machines in this workout. Whenever I do that on hypertrophy days, I get a lot of questions on Instagram. Oh, so hypertrophy means machines. Why do you use so many machines? I've answered this a few times, so let me just get it out of the way quickly in case you've never heard my response to that question. Funny I'm saying it while doing pull-ups, like one of the only free weight exercises I do. But <laughs> So my gym has a lot of really good machines. I feel a lot of these machines more than certain free weight exercises. Perfect example, this incline machine right here. If your gym has a machine like this, there's no reason not to use it. I personally use them more on my hypertrophy days where I'm lifting lighter, more so than the strength days, just because when you're lifting heavier, I do find free weights are a little bit more comfortable and they do, and free weights are better for building up overall strength. But if you're lifting in higher rep ranges, there is nothing wrong with using machines. You'll see after this one, I actually just started using this machine instead of dumbbell rows. And I like dumbbell rows, but this machine was amazing and I'm going to be sticking with it for a little bit. So just wanted to say that. So the title of the video or the thumbnail or whatever, it says something about your natural limit. So this is a question that I get asked a lot about your like, genetic natural limit. Like, am I at my genetic natural limit? And I mean, the, the thought I usually have when I get asked this question is, who cares? Does it matter? The people who, yet, who usually ask this question, the people who just started lifting. So I don't really understand why people who didn't even like really get into this whole fitness journey yet, why they're so concerned with their natural limit at the end. The truth is you don't know what your natural limit is. There's no point where your body is going to just let you know that you're no longer going to add muscle. And I personally believe there's never going to be a point where you actually can't add muscle. I just think it comes to a point where it's so slow that it's almost unnoticeable. If I had to guess if I'm at my natural limit, I definitely think I could, I could, I definitely think I could continue adding muscle. But at the same time, I'm aware that I probably would only gain maybe one to two pounds a year. Uh, whereas someone who's a lot newer to lifting can definitely gain a lot more than that. But I don't think there is actually a point where your body will be physically unable to put on muscle. I don't believe that exists. But more importantly, I don't understand the point in worrying about it. Are you going to really stop working out today because in seven years you might hit your limit? I mean, that just doesn't really make sense to me. So it's just one of those cases of worrying about something that doesn't really matter. Um, and on that topic, a lot of people are always sending me pictures of like random physiques. And they asked me the question, hey, Adam, do you think this is this guy natural? And I don't think people understand that that question has a lot to it than just looking at a physique. Now, don't get me wrong. Show me a picture of Ronnie Coleman, Phil Heath. I can tell you right away that guy is not natural. But if you show me a picture of someone who's just in very good shape, you can't tell if someone's natural just by looking at their physique. There's a lot more that goes into it. So... How long have they been training? How are their genetics? What kind of training are they doing? Do they know what they're doing? Do they track their macros? Do they track their diet? Um, so all those things go into it uh, to, to, really, to really know. So if, like, if you show me someone's physique and they're pretty impressive and they've been training six months and then you show me someone else who looks maybe identical but they've been training eight years, well, uh, the guy who's, who's been training eight years, if he's been doing everything right, there's a good chance he might be natural, whereas the guy who looks exactly like the guy who's been training eight years, if he did it in six months, maybe he's not natural. And beyond stuff like that, I really think you can't tell if someone's natural until you really know the person. So if you don't know me personally and you just look at my physique, I don't blame you, honestly, in certain lighting, in certain pictures, certain angles. I do agree that I probably actually look like I'm, I might not be natural. Um, funny story once, my friend actually took a picture of me when I competed that I didn't realize he took. And he sent it to me without my face in it. And he said, do you think this guy's natural? And I said, no. And then he laughed and he's like, that's you. And I'm like, oh my God. So like, so the truth is, like, I, I'm, I understand why I get accused of, of using drugs sometimes. I'm not saying I look overly impressive, but there are certain, air, certain lighting, certain angles, certain poses where I, I do look pretty impressive. I, like that angle while I'm saying this, I don't look impressive at all. But in other angles, I, I do look impressive. So... But if you actually knew me personally, if you actually knew what my mindset, if you've actually spoken to me, you've known what I've done, you've known my lifestyle for the last 12 years, I promise you would have no doubt in your mind that I'm natural. But if you don't know me at all, you just see another guy at the gym who's in pretty good shape, who goes to a gym with a bunch of people who are actually on stuff. Yes, it's very easy to jump to conclusions and assume that I'm on something. So 
Um, when people always want to know if a, a particular person is natural, besides for the blatantly obvious Mr. Olympia, IFBB competitors, besides those, if you see someone who's borderline natural, you cannot just judge based on a picture alone if they are or not. You really need to know a lot more. You need to know their personality. You need to know how long they've been training, their genetics. It's helpful to know if their diet is on point, how obsessed they are. Like people don't understand how like like obsessed I, I was and am still for for um, my entire life since I started this. I mean, from two thousand five to now two thousand eighteen, end of two thousand five. Um, I never took breaks. I was always serious. My level of motivation, obviously, it went through highs and lows, but I never actually took like a break during that time. So when you factor that all in, I mean, is it really hard to believe that at 28 years old, after training since I've been 15, not taking any breaks and actually knowing what I'm doing, is it that hard to believe that I'm actually 5'9 and 170 pounds? Like, I don't, to me, that's not extremely mind blowing. Again, if someone looked exactly like me after training for, for two months, okay, maybe they're on something. But again, before you judge someone's physique, before you judge what, what you think you know about them, Get to know the person. Do a little more research besides before you do that. So, anyway, that's just my thoughts. Uh, this work that is wrapping up, very exciting. I do try a brand new flavor of Halo Top that actually wasn't released to the public yet. After this, so stick around for that. It was so new that it didn't even exist on my fitness pal yet, and I had to create it myself. So that's pretty cool. Hit the thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next clip. All right, guys. So I'm pretty excited. This Halo Top flavor, Blueberry Crumble, it's not even out to the public yet. And Halo Top actually reached out to me to send this to me to try before the public. So when Halo Top sends you flavors that aren't even available to the public yet, you feel special. So Blueberry Crumble, I'm going to try it right now for the first time for you guys. And it's very creamy if you want to see it. And this is actually amazing. You have to definitely like blueberry. It is a very strong blueberry flavor. But if you like blueberry, you like ice cream, you'll definitely like this one. I'm not 100% sure when this one's going to be available. I think it's sometime this month. So be on the lookout for it. And um, yeah, out of 10, I would probably give this like an 8.5 out of 10. Still like birthday cake a little bit better. But overall, blueberry crumble, good good flavor. So anyway, that's going to wrap up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. By the way, I'm at my parents' house if you uh, didn't recognize the background. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in the next video.